Today's lesson, 31A, Editing in Cinelera. Before we go over the Cinelera interface, in order to keep audio and video synchronized, it is important to know the time rate and sample rate you will be using. For example, normal NTSC is 29.97 frames per second. A 30 second NTSC clip would be comprised of 899.1 frames. This yields an exit point 899 frames after the insert point on the timeline. Oh, there's the fire in my brain! Stabbing me! Agony! A 44 kilohertz sample rate in audio would yield I can't stand the torture! The torment! I can't stand it! I won't! Okay, repeat after me. Similera is easy. Forget everything you've heard about calculating your frames with your in point and your out point. And you guys losing it. Okay, forget everything you've heard. It's very simple, so let's get over to... Oh, okay, that's a timeout. So let's jump right in and finally get to it, our editing in Cinelera tutorial. First thing we're going to do is bring up Cinelera. Clicky. Boom, goes the dynamite. And if you look here, as your tip for the day comes up. Yeah, I like to keep that. It's got some good stuff every now and then. So let's close that. Now, if you've watched the other stuff that I've linked, you know all about this, but just in case, this is the viewer. This is where you can preview things that you're going to put into your timeline down here. This is the Cinelera compositor. This is where you're going to view your actual project while you're editing it. And it has some controls here, and the forward and backward here are actually here too. They do the same thing. This will let you drag along the timeline, and you'll notice that you're, if you're having your window, the time selected here, you'll notice your little position changing while you slide that around. This is your program window. This is where you do everything. These are your tracks and uh, all your editing. And over here is your resources. This has got your audio effects, your video effects, your audio transitions, video transitions, Labels, don't worry about that. Clips, don't worry about that. And the actual media you're going to be using in your project. So first thing we want to do is the one time only set it and forget it stuff of setting it up to make sure it's running right. Most of this stuff you can save, uh, just leave it at default. Now let's go to settings and preferences. And we start with the playback tab. So playback, audio out, you want to make sure that the view follows playback so that the audio and the video are in the sync. Use software for positioning information. You know, that's usually unchecked, but I usually check it. Um, I don't have to worry about this because it requires root priority, the audio playback and real-time priority. You probably won't need to worry about it either unless you have a really slow machine. Audio driver, this should default to whatever your audio driver is uh, just in your Linux distribution. You see, that's your default capture device. You can set it for OSS because everything runs OSS on this on my box, or you can go to ALSA. Those are probably the two you're going to want to mess with. Do not check play every frame because if this thing is not playing at least the frame rate that you're you know wanting to do things in, uh, you're going to get some weird sound repeating and stuttering and all kinds of stuff like that. Scaling, if it is not set to bicubic enlarge and bilinear reduce, go ahead and set that. That's going to be your quickest option. And pretty much everything else you can leave the same. But let's take a look down here. This is probably going to default to X11 XV. That's not going to be what you want. If you have a video card that supports OpenGL, and for 9 out of 10 of you, you probably do, you're going to want X11 OpenGL as your driver. This is really going to speed up the compositing and the viewing. Recording? Don't worry about that. Just leave all this default as well. Because we're doing our recording in Kino. Performance. Don't worry about this. This involves a render farm. And if you know what a render farm is, <laughs> you probably are making fun of me right now for even doing this tutorial. 
interface you can leave all this the same but here the theme SUV I like to keep it SUV there are some other options and you can go to the Acurad, Acurad uh, repository and they have some other themes there but because they do you know here and there the odd thing funky I like to stick with SUV that's usually my most reliable and one more thing I keep all my projects on my B on my uh, secondary hard drive so an index files are normally going to go in your regular hard drive if you're working on a project and something happens to your primary hard drive and you have to reinstall uh, all your indexes are gone and Sinalera has got to have these to tell it where the files are and what it's editing so I just went ahead and pointed this to my Sinalera projects folder on my secondary hard drive and the hidden directory indexes so take my advice and do that just precautionarily and that is it we have set up Sinalera as they say set it and forget it someone please shoot me in the head for saying that <laughs>